make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Shine upon you and 
but we will do what you're asking us to do, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Let's pray for everyone who's going to serve this morning in whatever capacity, whether we're standing up on the stage or whether we are behind the scenes. Let's pray for the, um, the, the help of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray that the Lord will strengthen his, his people. And even as we all gather together, we pray for the children's department, pray for the ushers, everyone who is working, everyone who is serving today, that the Lord will give them the grace to serve, you know, with humility, to serve with a grateful heart, to serve, you know, with love in the mighty name of Jesus. And let's pray that every soul that comes in here, everyone who comes in here to listen, to be part of the service, will be touched by the Spirit of God. There's no point in us coming here and just, you know, playing church and just, you know, ticking a box. We need our lives to be changed. We need the Spirit of God to transform us. Let's pray that as everyone comes in here today, that no one will live here the same way. That the Spirit of God will meet each and every one at the point of our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. name of the Lord, for the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. I want you to just speak a good word to someone next to you, just bless them, bless them and just, you know, edify them and just speak a good word into their lives. Just, you know, encourage them, you know, we're here in the presence of the almighty God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this this, this fellowship, we are fellows in the same ship this morning. Lord, we bless and magnify you. We thank you that we have all come, our faces so different, so beautiful, to come to bless the most beautiful, the one who is the one that made every single one of us in this place. I want you to just lift up your hands and just begin to turn your focus onto God and just thank him for this breath that is in your body. Just begin to bless God, even in your own sound, even in your own voice. Lift up your voice and just, just magnify the name of the Lord. Say sweet words unto him. Father, I want you to hear my voice this morning. I'm here to partake of the worship. I'm not here to watch. I'm here to bless you, O oh God. We're here to just exalt and magnify your holy name. For you alone are worthy to receive all the thanks, to receive all the praise. Let every other name fade away for only you, God. Only you deserves this praise. Only you are mighty. The Lord God Almighty, mighty in battle, strong, always doing wonders. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Jehovah who sees us. Oh God, we thank you that your eyes are upon us. We thank you that your hand is upon us. Lord, we bless you this morning. We magnify you. We let it stir up from the bottom of our bellies, oh God. The Bible says, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. If you know you are alive this morning, if you know that you have the resurrection power in you, I want you to shout hallelujah. If you know that you have come to bless God in a new way, with a new sound, I want you to praise the name of the Lord. I want you to just feel free in the presence of the Almighty God. The one who says that in, the, in His presence there is liberty. We have liberty to worship this God. Some people, they have to hide somewhere when they are worshiping God. But you and I are here. We can clap our hands. We can move our bodies. We can stomp our feet. We can move left and we can move right. Without fear. Without fear. For the Bible says that, you know, the, the perfect love of God casts out fear. So we thank you, Lord, that we are not afraid this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we are free to worship you this morning. We thank you that deep will call on to deep this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we surrender our hearts. Our hearts are ready for your move. Our hearts are ready for your move. Oh, God, our hearts are ready. Our hearts are ready. We've come to bless your name, King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We're going to sing a song this morning. We all know it. And it's just saying that, you know, we've come to bless the name of the Lord. He is King of kings, Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can everybody just put your hands together? Just put your hands together. Hallelujah. here. 
here because of grace, a part of your great plan. We have come to seek your face, Lord, the wonders of your hand. And yes, we need your touch, but you've given us so much that we just want to thank you for all you've done for us. We've come to bless your name.
we shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, God. We've come to just praise your holy name. I want you to just quiet yourself in the presence of the Almighty. And just continue to bless him for that resurrection power that is at work within us. Sometimes we don't recognize the magnitude of who God has put inside of us, that is the Holy Spirit. Lord, we just surrender to your Lordship. Hallelujah. Thank you,
we just want to worship you this morning. Lord, indeed, you have been a good God unto us. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for your faithfulness over our lives. Thank you for we are who we are by your grace. Thank you because your mercy has brought us thus far. Thank you for the victories we have enjoyed without fighting. Oh, thank you for great turnaround. Thank you for our year of jubilee. Oh, Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, from the depth of our hearts, we say thank you. Thank you for our children. Thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for the men. Thank you for the women. Thank you for our businesses, our careers. Thank you for our health. Thank you, Jesus. For the church of God, we bless your name. Glory be to your holy name. Lord, all that we can say is that we are grateful. Thank you, Father. Lord, as we go into your world, we pray that you will minister life unto us. Let your word nourish our soul. Let your word pierce our hearts. Lord, let your word turn around, Lord, our life. And at the end of this, O oh God, let only your name alone be glorified. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. Amen. Let's jam our hands together for Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to thank God you know, for this opportunity and also thank the pastorate and the ministers you know, for this privilege to share the word of God with uh, the people. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will you know, bless us all in Jesus' name. And whatever word that he wants us to pick individually, you know, like we've prayed earlier in the morning, that the Lord will help our hearts to be recipients of his word. And the word of God, you know, we do you know, wondrous things in our life in Jesus' name. Please, let's open our Bible to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. I read, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should Shew for the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light then, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. 12 and the last. Having your conversations honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, you know, uh, first of all, I want to maybe make a disclaimer. One, I'm not a literature student. And then I'm, also, I'm not also a pastor. So you might not get uh, the perfect thing that you want. But again, in a way that it ministers to us, it will, you know, it will do every one of us good. And that we are able to you know, open our hearts and then um, let whatever, whether it's a phrase, whether it's a clause, whether it's just a word, you know, to minister to our soul. And like I said, you know, I, I struggled with the title. But again, I just you know, managed to just give you something called true identity. And I know that as we go on, you know, we might begin to see a different title, a different thing that it ministers to us individually. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to ask first, you know, the question of what is an identity? What does it mean? You know, I, I had to check uh, Wikipedia and I saw that identity is the individual characteristics by which a thing or person is recognized or known. You know, identity is you know, what makes us who we are, what makes us us. Identity is what makes this chair, you know, a chair. You know, on, on Wednesday, our mommy was leading a prayer, and she was saying something about when a car or a chair is being manufactured in the factory, it already it has its identity. You know, so when it comes to the market, whether it's in the store, whether it's going on sales, whether it is whatever way you are getting it, you know what it is meant for. 
Hallelujah. And so, the same way we are, we have our unique identity. Identity is unique to us as individual. And then, one of also things I also saw was that identity, you know, was broken into, you know, have cultural, you know, people can be identified based on their culture, you know, based on their profession, based on their ethnic group, you know, based on their religious um, um, environment, you know, based on gender, based on their political, you know, stands, and also in terms of disability too. You know, these people, people can be identified based on all of this, you know. But, you know, when an individual signs up, you know, and I was trying to just look for how, how I can really relate it to us, that it can make a little bit of sense. And something was, you know, dropping my spirit, that when you sign up for an email, or when you get a job, or when you register your bank um, account, you know, there is usually a sign-up process, right? They give you, like, a username, they give you a password. Hallelujah. And most times, those credentials are usually unique to us. We don't have the same credentials. Am I making sense? So, I also saw that the kind of um, security you give, the level of security you give your the identity depends also on the value you place and the level of risk. If I may explain. I know some of us, our email address, our email box, maybe on our work systems, on our phones, we usually don't do sign-outs. We do remember me when I come. I've seen, it does automatically logs in. Am I making sense? So that when you open your phone, your email is accessible. Because really, nobody can steal money from your email, apart from maybe getting attachment, document file and all. But when it comes to your bank applications, I believe nobody logs onto their bank app and just opens it and moves around, right? So it shows that there is a level of risk that that bank app you know, is liable to. So we tend to give it more priority. We tend to take note of it. Hallelujah. And I also noticed that when you open e when you, you know, sign up on an, an account, maybe your medical app, your banking app, your whatever um, application, there is usually like a default password. Usually when it's not directly from you, maybe an official email. They share with you, this is your username, and this is your default password, right? And then, um, how many of us are still using our default password? No, there are some cases that you still have people using their default password. But for banks, mobile banks app, when they send you maybe your ATM card, and they send you, you tend to want to change. They will even advise you to change. Why? Because the, your identity can be hijacked. Hallelujah. Your identity can be stolen away. So if you did not take you know, the responsibility of ensuring that you guide your identity jealously, somebody else might what? Take it away. We've seen cases whereby you know, people lose money, people lose their, you know, most times money, because they were careless with their identity when it comes to their online banking applications. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I'm saying plenty of story, but just bear with me. And you know, one of the things that you know, was coming to me while I was preparing this message, from the book of Psalm 51, verse 5, Psalm, 50, Psalm 51, verse 5, you know, David was saying, he said, I was sharpened in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. But Christ came to change, you know, that default identity. He came to change that default password. You know, as we, we came all, according to the book of Psalm 51, you know, it was discovered, it is, you know, it is, it is a fact that, you know, it is in sin that we came. And so every one of us has a what? A default state of sin. And that was why Christ came. Christ came to say, oh, yes, you, you might, you know, have this default state, but I have come that you may have life. I have come to, you know, with my blood, you know, cleanse away every atom of sin. Hallelujah. 
And that was why we saw in the book of Romans 5, 8. That I said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so at our default state of sin, you know, Jesus Christ was willing you know, to help us, even though most of us, we, 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 we and them, I know this happens also in our day-to-day -day work. You know, you see, IT administrators keep sending an email, a default password is, is, you know, you need to change it, and you will really remind me later, you know. And the same way God, Jesus Christ, you know, keeps coming to you, some of us, before we eventually allowed him to change that default state. But glory be to God that the Lord has helped us in Jesus' name. Also from the book of 1 John 3, 8a, the Bible says that he that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Hallelujah. The devil sinned from the beginning. So the devil has his own default identity and is held on to his identity. Hallelujah. It says, hence it is for this purpose that Jesus died so we can change from default and then, like I said, it is also a choice. It is a choice. It is a choice for us to change. You know, they give us the privilege to say, okay, this is your credentials. If you want to change, they will advise us to change, but it depends on us. And I was going to also ask, you know, most times when you want to log on to your mobile app, and I'm trying to relate with that because I know, you know, when it comes to money, there's a way of, um, the special preference that we all give it. Do we ever, have you, do you get frustrated the number of times that your mobile app asks you to, maybe you want to make a transaction, it tells you your password, and you've just done it to try to maybe change uh, a tab, you now came back, maybe a copy an account number, you came back, it's asking you for PIN again. Do you, do, does anybody, you know, get frustrated like, I just, and it is just because to guide, just to be sure, to be sure that it is still the same you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter 2.9 that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. And so, that is our true identity. Hallelujah. That is our true identity. There was no... Um, Something happened, like, last month, you know, after we had the fast, you know, we had the fast and everybody, you know, we're praying. And because of the prayer meeting for 14 days, there was so much of uh, uh, this level of assurance that, oh, once we come out of this fast, you know, we are breaking ground, you know, we are, you know, breaking limits. You know, we finished fast on Sunday and on Monday, you know, I, something I was expecting, you know, it was a different thing. And I was like, ah, after all of this and... You know, and the, the spirit, the, like um, NYSC people say, morale was low. You know, the morale was very low. You know, and um, something now dropped in my spirit. You know, about something, and that is the reason why I decided to just, you know, when I was told to minister, you know, that was the only thing that came to my spirit that, and I just started looking for how to develop and how to make it, you know, had small sense to it. And I pray the Lord will help us even as we go on in Jesus' name. You know, from the book of Micah 5.2, Micah 5.2, Micah 5.2, said, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient time. Sorry, I'll be reading so much of Bible passages, but I will, God helping me to marry them together. Looking at also Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6. Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord our righteous Savior. Also, Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah 7, 14. All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. 
and we call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Hallelujah. You know, all of this that have been adding together from Micah to Jerusalem to Isaiah, you know, these are the prophets of God. They were already prophesying about somebody that is coming. They, were, they already saw ahead an identity you know, that was coming, which was which is Jesus Christ. And so they were speaking, they were saying it, you know, they kept saying it. And, you know, in order to be able to fulfill this purpose, after about 600 years, you know, the angel visited Mary. And I'll read it from the book of Luke 1, the book of Luke 1 and 31 to 32 to 33 thereabout. It said, and behold, thou shalt conceive, this is the angel talking to Mary, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendant forever. His kingdom will never end. His kingdom will never end. You know, after 600 years, when you know, the prophets of God has you know, prophesied based on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the power of God about somebody that was coming with a very unique identity. The angel now visited the mother. But you know, something, as I was trying to study more, there were so, so many, several things that were occurring to me. You know, said, after the birth of Jesus, you know, the Bible recorded in the book of Luke 2, 49 to 50, Luke 2, 49 to 50. Said when his parents, you know, they went for uh, a, a feast, you know, and then the parents, they left him behind. And they, they, they got to the middle of the road before they remembered that they forgot him. You know, several things were trying to, you know, play in my head that, you know, you know we, are, we have children, you know, we are parents. Some of us have four, some of us have three, five, two. You know, is it possible to maybe just go to Manchester and be coming back from a trip and you forget that there's somebody in the car? Or it is, you know, most of these are just orchestrated to work in the purpose that God has spoken about the arrival of Jesus Christ. You know, and when the parents were looking for him, you know, they questioned him on why he has allowed them to be stressed out looking for him. Don't forget that the angel visited Mary and they told him the uniqueness about this man. They told him that he's going to reign forever. He's going to be the Messiah. He's going to be called Emmanuel. So, and then, you know, some of, some of us who are parents, when we are pregnant, early, maybe a word of prophecy, say this, you know, this baby is going to be very great, you know. And so we run with that during the growth of the baby. So we help that child, you know, walk in the line of God and the purpose of God to fulfill purpose. But again, when... What, what struck me was, as they were, as they saw him, they were, you know, Mary, they were hungry, and it can be frustrating, you know, you've traveled all the way from one city to another, and you now got to realize that you're not your son, you can just spank that boy's head, and where have you been, you know, you've been stressing us all out, you know, and they were asking, why did you do this to us? And, you know, Jesus Christ's response was that, you know, it is my father's business, this is what I'm called to do, this is my identity. You people know, you gave birth to me. The angel spoke to you about my identity. But in verse 50, the, the, the Bible said that they understood not. The Bible said that they understood not. The way Jesus was talking about that this is my identity, this is what I'm supposed to do. But they said, they, 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 so I'm, I was wondering, you that God has spoken to you, angel visited you. How many of us has angels visited here? Maybe our revelation, you know, our dreams, you know, Maybe not, you know, but we still, some of us, we, there's a word in the, in the book that we held on to and we run with that. And this is somebody that the angel of God visited and you do not, there was no sexual intercourse, you had a baby and you gave birth to the savior of the world and you said you don't understand again. So it struck me that it is possible that even our own fellow, maybe parents, our own siblings, they might forget our identity. You know, you might... Open, yeah, you, and I, I know my wife is guilty of this. When she logs on to an, maybe an application, she asks me, do you remember my password? 
And, and, and I know that most people do that. You know, you, you know, you work in an environment whereby you know, they will just call you and say, oh, please, I, I can't log on to my email. Do you, do, you, do you remember my password? And I'm wondering, password should be something that is uniquely identified with you. So if you cannot remember your identity, then what do you want me to do? You know, but we have, we have fallen a prey of all of these things. Some of us have forgotten our identity. So it is our responsibility to what? To guide our identity. Hallelujah. And then, I also noticed that once you have forgotten your identity, you are liable to, the, you, are, you, are, you are the messes of people. Whatever they give you is what you will take. Abby, if you don't know it and I say, okay, this is it, you will take it because you will assume that that is the truth. But that is not the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we've, we've seen about how Jesus Christ came about, how the prophet has been talking about who will be coming. You know, the angel visited the mother. And when he got baptized from the book of Luke 3, 21 to 22, after Jesus Christ you know, got baptized by John the Baptist, so he said, the Bible says that now when all the people from verse 21, Luke 3 from verse 21, said now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. Verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Don't forget the book of 2 Corinthians said that in the mouth of two or three shall the words be established. So, the prophets, not even one prophet, the prophets, they spoke, they've spoken about the coming of Jesus Christ. The angel visited the mother. You know, even in the book of John, he, Jesus Christ also got to a place, he said that, he said, I am the way, the truth. So, he understood who he was. He understood his identity. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit also validated it after he got baptized. He said, this one, no, is my beloved son. What else? I'm coming. Hallelujah. And the same way, you know, several of us, there have been prophecies, you know, there have been declarations that the men of God have spoken about our destiny, about our lives. You know, there have been even the word of God that we have read and we have seen God's promises and we know that the word of God, you know, they are yea and amen. If you have spoken a thing, you know, he's able to bring it to pass. You know, we know that the Lord is not a man that would lie. So if God is saying that this is your identity, you know, that is who you are. Hallelujah. So just look at, look at how, you know, <laughs> things can just be funny. So when you go to the book of four, uh, Luke, Luke 4, Luke 4, 1 to 3, Luke 4, Luke 4, and I'll read from verse 1. And you know, the Bible said that, and Jesus this is the person that his identity has been certified okay from angels, from God, by himself, by the Holy Spirit. Everybody knows who he is. And Jesus being, that's from verse 1, Luke 4. Said, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did not eat nothing. And when there were ended, he afterwards hungered. You know, and this is what brought about all of this, my story. You know, Jesus Christ fasted for 40 days. He did not even eat anything. And despite that, he got tempted. And me, I just did that many days. You know, so that was what, you know, come, you know, it was like, okay, just, so just calm down. You know, the verse 3 said, and the devil said unto him, imagine the devil, he said, if thou be son of God, this is somebody that, the Holy Spirit said, this is my beloved son. You know, the, there have been prophecies from the, from the prophets that this one is going to, his kingdom will last forever. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. The, 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 the angel visited the mother and spoke to him, spoke to her, to say that, oh, this is going to be, he's going to deliver the whole of, the whole of Israel. 
This is no. And the devil, he knows. He knows. And Jesus Christ even said he's the way. So he knows that this man is the way. He knows that he's the son of God. But he was checking on his identity. He said in verse, he said, yes, they be the calling son of God. So if you are the son of God. You know, it should not be coming that if you are the son of God. I don't know if I'm making sense. You know, he's questioning his identity. He's querying him. Like um, what do people say, if he's sure for you. If you are the son of God, if you know that you are the son of God, does he need to, does he need to prove again that he's the son of God? No. Everything around him is saying that he's the son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, this is the person that said that gold and silver he has. He's, he will rule his kingdom, will reign forever. And he began to bring petty things. Turn bread to stone. I turn stone to bread. Fly here. No jump here. No bow down. This is somebody that has been saying that his kingdom will reign forever. So if his kingdom will reign forever, who does he need to bow down for again? Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, and you know, all of these things, you know, just try to help me to pick up some things together based on this verse I've read. One of the things I first saw was that, you know, Jesus Christ just got baptized. This is somebody with fresh power, fresh anointing, fresh grace. Everything is fresh. You know, he's carrying, you know, he's, you know, you know when, you, when you pray, and maybe when you pray or you fast or something, and you are coming at, you know, the fire in you is, you, are just, you don't want to just confront anything. You know, when you are full of life, you know, and this is somebody that is full of all of this, and something is coming to just, you know, ordinarily, you know, I know, I know that some of us, we do that, we fall a prey of that. When they ask you, you know, and then, um, sorry for this language, they said, uh, this growing up, they say, I they born you well. And then people want to prove that, indeed, yes, yes, now my mama born me. No, that's, the, that's but we don't need it. There is a way, and you will see the way God, Jesus Christ, was trying to prove his identity. Hallelujah. Again, he was full of the Holy Spirit because the Bible said that he was full of the Holy Spirit. And he also said that it, he was not led by the flesh. Based on the book of um, Luke 4 that we read, he said he was led by the Spirit. So he did not go to, his, to the wilderness on his own accord. The, the Spirit of God led him there. Hallelujah. He was also led to the wilderness. You know, he saw that he was also hungry. You know, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, you know, I think verse 2 said he was hungered. Hallelujah. But he had a basis for his identity. He did not prove by word of mouth. He did not prove by trying to you know, retaliate back. What did he say? He said, it is written. It is written. You know, my identity has been certified okay. My identity, I have a certificate for my identity. Hallelujah. And as I was reading through, I also saw that in verse 13, the Bible said that the devil left him for a season. That means that our identity will be checked by seasons. We spoke this morning about times and seasons. The same thing that will be happening to everyone our identity will be verified. We will need to log on every time to validate our identity. Praise God. Praise God. You know, and I saw that the war against our identity, the major thing, the war, is to wreck our relationship with God. You know, it's to, it's, it's to you know, Satan wants us to do the same thing he did with God. You know, Satan did not, his identity was of God when he started. He was, you know, was an angel. But he just wanted to, you know, to rub shoulders with God. And so he lost his own previous identity. He now had a, another identity that, so he's now trying to recruit more people so that he will not stand alone. And that's why he keeps warring against our identity. 
He wants us to break that relationship with God. He wants us to get disconnected so that we can be part of his team. I pray the Lord Almighty will continue to help us in Jesus' name. And I looked at it. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. It said, for God doth know that in the day ye eat, and this is the devil whispering you know, in through the serpent to Eve. It said, for God doth know that in the day ye eat therefore, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hallelujah. Don't forget, in the book of Genesis 1, what did God say? He said, let us create man in our own image. At default, these guys were already in the image of God, but they don't know their identity. And that was how the devil could come and said, come and eat this fruit and get an identity of God. Because these guys have forgotten their identity. They don't know. And, don't, and we know we're saying that once you forget your identity, you become at, you, you are at the mercies of whatever they bring to you. And so these guys, they forgotten who they were, and they were just at the mercies of the devil. He told them, it's this. Your eyes will be open. You will identify good things, bad things. You will be like God. But they were already like God. They were already God because God made us in his own image. So what happened? Hallelujah. And there are several false identities that the devil brings to us. Several tell you, you cannot prosper. It is not possible. You cannot be well. This sickness you know, gives you facts. This sickness kills in six months. It tells you that, no, you are an hopeless person. No, don't worry, don't bother. When people are praying, you, you are, your case is... You no, know, it tells people that, oh, you think you have been forgiven. For, you, forgotten all those sins. Forgotten how, how miserable your past was. You cannot be, the devil will be telling you you cannot be forgiven. That was all the devil will be telling you. That you cannot be helped. If people are praying, oh, anointing, oh, you, you want to get anointing. You cannot. That is what the devil keeps bringing. Hallelujah. And, you know, something was, I also was, look, you know, understanding that, you know, the word you is you, you know, you are, when you say you, you can't be talking to yourself and say you. And then most times, and I might be wrong, but most times when maybe you are praying or you are trusting God for something and you begin to get some whispering in your spirit, do you get, do you, or, or, do you, do you get something, do you, does that word come to you to say, ah, I, I, I will not do this, I will not be able to do this. Or it comes to you and says, oh, you, you will not be able to do this. Most times it comes to you and says, you. It comes to you, and so that means something is talking to us. Something is telling us what our identity is not. So it keeps telling you, no, don't worry, you cannot, you, you cannot, you cannot, you will not. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, it is like I said, it is our responsibility to guide our identity. I said, looking at this, you know, I'm able to highlight a few things that can help us, you know, that, that I saw that, you know, try to place a check on our identity based on what we have read. And I saw that in the wilderness, you know, we've talked about season, that you know, there's always a season for, you know, season for everything. Now, Things might be going well. You know, it might be a season of harvest, a season of seed and all. And you know, I saw that as children of God, there is a likely possibility of us being in a season of wilderness like Jesus was. The question is, are we able to still hold on to our identity? When it is not the, the what we are used to, you know, when you, you know, find yourself in a different season, whether it is a good one, whether it is a wilderness season, are you still able to hold on to your identity? You know, there is this, and I don't really believe it. It depends on, yeah, but it does happen to people that you don't know the character of a man until he starts having you no know, resources. 
do you also change identity? You know, so you have like a chameleon-like identity. So when there is this, you act like this. When there is not, you act like this. I also saw that appetites can also you know, check our identity. He did it for Esau. Esau could not survive. He did it for Jesus. Jesus Christ said, man shall not live by bread alone. It is not about food. Hallelujah. Money can also check our identity. You know, we, it is good to condemn Judas. That, oh, how will he sell Jesus Christ? But do we, have we ever thought about it that Jesus Christ, for him to have chosen Judas, there must have been some very good attributes in him. He would have been very, maybe a good accountant, you know, he would have been, and he would have been a diligent person. You know, he was his, part of his best 12. And if you are choosing your people that play football, no coach just picks anybody except from where we come from that they will just maybe they will pay money and they will bring people into the team. Most people tend to bring their best team to the playing foot, um, pitch. And so Jesus Christ will not bring Judas if he knows that he was not capable. But unfortunately, you know, and I, he, he, he fell, unfortunately. And you will know that that was not his, his true personality. Because after he failed, and he saw that, oh, he went wrong. He went un uncontrollably. You know, he went to commit suicide. Because he was, he was very, you know, he was very, he, he was not happy with himself. He said, how can he do this? How can he lose his identity to how many shekels? Just to, you know, Judas, Judas, Judas Iscariot wouldn't have believed. Hallelujah. I also saw that power, power could also, you know, be a check on our identity. No, and when you look at the story of Gehazi, this is somebody that has been following the prophet. There was a story, there was a, there was a part, I think, in, 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 it's in chapter 4 of 2 Kings. When the, uh, the, um, the, is it the Shunammite woman now? Yeah, is it, is it, is it, is it the Shunammite woman? Or the, I think the Shunammite woman, yes. That, you no, know, she, she, she needed the help. It was this Gehazi that was able to discover that, oh, there's a need in this home. No, he, he, he's not like, he doesn't have to see that there are no children. There must have been some level of grace that Isu must have had as a, as, a, as a son of the prophet. And so, for Elijah to have also been giving him responsibilities, oh, go and represent him. Because when the boy died, Elijah sent him, oh, go and help me give this, go and do this. So he was also a very good man. But he got to a point, he was a second man, and he saw that I can actually make money through this medium. And he took advantage. And we knew what ended up his life. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And how do we then retain our true identity? How do we retain our true identity? You know, the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 says, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon table that it may run that readeth it. Jesus ran with what was written. So we need to write down our identity. How many of us have like a notebook where we write our passwords? Yeah, great. Why do we write it down? So that we don't forget. How many of us write the password of our mobile application that we transfer money. How many of us write it? We don't write it. Why? So, beyond writing, to also retain your identity, you need to also meditate on your... How do you remember your banking password? You meditated. Even though you might... I don't know, it might be long, it might be short, but you cannot just afford to... You know, you cannot just write exactly. You cannot write it. I know... Maybe if I check your, if you check your, if you bring your diary now, you might write Gmail, you write the password. Facebook. But did you write Barclays Bank? No. You meditate because what? The, the, the risk in losing that identity is more than recovering it back. Hallelujah. You know, we also proclaim, we speak it. You know, the book of Hebrew 10 said we should what? Continue in the, 
confession of our faith. Keep on saying it. This is who I am. The devil is telling you, you. I'm telling him, hi. The devil does not have, he cannot change my identity. Hallelujah. The fourth one said, make a deliberate effort to guide your identity. Make a deliberate effort. Like I said, it is not the responsibility of anybody to guide your identity for you. And if I look at the book of Colossians 2, Colossians 2, 6 to 10, it said, as we have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceits. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. He said we should beware. Beware that people will not bamboozle us around with fake identity. Beware. Guide it. The Bible says we should guide our salvation with fear and trembling. Guide your identity. Watch over it. Don't let situations dictate who you are. Don't let circumstance tell you what you are not. Hallelujah. Our true identity is determined by who God is. That is true, our true identity. Who God is and what he has said we are. Those are. That is the only thing that verifies our identity. Who God is and what he has said we are. Who is God? He's not a man that he should lie. Who is God? Who is God? He's our helper in times of trouble. Who are we? We are, not, we are the head and not the tail. We will be above only and not beneath. Who am I? I shall live and not die. Who am I? I will eat in plenty and I will be satisfied. Who am I? Where a thousand fall at my side and at my right hand, it shall not come near me. Who am I? Which report will I believe? The report of the world or the report of the Lord? Who am I? The Lord will give me houses I did not build. Who am I? Who am I? I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I cannot be a chosen generation and somebody will be dictating something wrong to me. The Bible says that the thoughts he has for us, they are thought of peace and not of evil. So if there is any evil cases around me, that is not the thought of the Lord for me. It is just for this season. I am coming out. So, don't let situations, don't let the season of wilderness, don't let circumstances, even though they might be factual, but that is not what we are. Hallelujah. No. The good news is that, you know, once we pass an identity check, there is always a glory ahead. You know, and, I, and, I, and this something was, you know, uh, when you, when maybe there's this old email or something that you used to register for, maybe an account, or maybe peradventure there's like a, like a, um, like a benefit that has been attached to that maybe email or that account. And peradventure you have forgotten the password. And you have been trying, maybe, you know, you've been calling, oh, do you, you know, can you remember what I used to sign up for this? Or maybe, and suddenly you, you log on and you're able to access. What is the level of joy that we have? Oh, finally, I'm, I'm able to access this account. That is also the joy that awaits our identity check. We saw it in that book of Luke. After Jesus Christ passed all of those seasons, the Bible recorded he was just doing several miracles. In that same Luke 4, Doing several miracles, he was just you know helping the oppressed, you know, delivering so many people because he has been able to pass his identity check. It is our season of perfect jubilee. 
And our daddy in the Lord has, you know, told us. And the Bible says that if you, um, if you trust in the Lord our God, we will we'll be established. If we believe the prophet, we will prosper. He has said it through his son that in this season of Jubilee, there is what? Restoration. And so for as many that might have lost their identity, maybe paraventure there are situations that have come up and then, you know, we've, we've just agreed with wrong identities. We've just said, oh, some of us that we were, you know, there were so many, we had passion. You know, the things that we do before, you know, they've been telling you, you know, just, it's just, just be coming down. You know, you're already, you're already down. The situations have made you to even switch identity. Has made you to be able to, to start taking what is not for you. It is our season of jubilee. And I am glad to inform us that our identity has already been restored. You know, and just to wrap up, you know, in the book of James 5, verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. They shall be forgiven him. I'm here to encourage us that if there is any one of us that we felt like, oh, I, have, I, cannot, I cannot even figure out what my identity is again. The book of James that we have read said, if there is anybody here, said, let, all, let the person come so that the elders will pray. You know, as we bow down our heads, and you know, it is the elders. So our, you know, our pastor will just you know, come and pray. If there is anybody that, you know, we just want to, you know, tell God, Lord, I am, I am I'm carrying about with the wrong identity. I need you to restore my identity. It could be in our place of salvation, maybe because of issues of life, we have, we have lost our personality. You know, we are beginning to do what we don't do before. We are already joining them. If we cannot beat them, we join them. You know, the, the passion we have for the things of God is already getting cold. You know, even in our career, you know, some of the things that we feel that, oh, I would have achieved in five years because it's not coming. And it's ten years already. We're already thinking, oh, maybe this is not where I'm going. Maybe I should just take this. Let me just take what is coming. You know, the Bible has said in the book of James that if there's anyone here this, this morning, let him come as our daddy pray for them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's just continue to pray like we have read said confess your sins to each other but more importantly let's confess our sins to God and if you are here you are, or you are watching online you don't have a relationship with Jesus that's the best place to start because that is what forms our true identity the identity of a man who will survive all the vicissitudes of this world the identity of a man or a woman who will make it to the kingdom has to be in Christ. And so if you have no, have no relationship with Jesus Christ, you are, you are here in-house or you are watching online, I'd like us to start from there. And um, the very best place to start is to acknowledge that we have sinned against God. The Bible says, like we have read in the book of Psalms, that in sin did our mothers conceive us. We were all born in sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of Romans. So we want to ask for mercy and forgiveness. And as we pray, as I invite those people who are giving their lives to Christ, I'd like the rest of us to please continue to pray. Lord, wherever I have lost my identity, today, Lord, I recoup it in the name of Jesus Christ. But for those of us who are giving our lives to Christ, you want to acknowledge your sin. We all have sinned, and like I said earlier on, and you also want to just confess those sins and ask for forgiveness. That the Lord will have mercy upon you. Whatever, you know, particular sin you think that you have committed that keeps, you know, coming up to you. Mention that sin specifically to God.
But otherwise, just confess all of your sins together. Just acknowledge that, Lord, I have sinned against you. It's something that I have done. It's something a lot of us in this house have done before. And by his grace, you know, God came into our lives and saved our souls. Just like he wants to do this morning or this afternoon as you listen to us. So confess your sins before God and ask him to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for your sin and for the sin of humanity, and that he actually paid the price to reconcile us back to God. So I want to just you know, ask that you believe this morning, this afternoon, the, the, the fact that you are giving your life to Christ consciously, and that he himself, by his Spirit, will come to dwell inside of you the moment he has washed you by his blood. And that from this day on, your life will never remain again. Your identity is in Christ Jesus. And you have a new identity that will last you, you know, over every circumstance and challenges that life may want to throw ahead, uh, 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 life may want to throw at you. And so we just want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given us again this afternoon to receive salvation and deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to confess our sins, acknowledge our errors, and um, make our lives right with you. And we want to thank you specifically for your word that you have sent to us. Thank you, Lord, because our identity is in you. Thank you, Lord, that wherever or whatever may have, you know, um, taken our identity away from us, or maybe we of, of our own accord have been very careless and, you know, forgotten our identities, we are asking, Lord, that this afternoon again, you will restore us in the name of Jesus. In the spirit of liberty, in the spirit of jubilee, in the spirit of a perfect jubilee, Lord, we receive a new identity in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, we worship you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Just um, one or two more prayer points. I want us to pray that, Lord, whatever I have believed in the past, that is not your identity for my life. Because I am upon Zion. The Bible says where two or three of us are gathered together is Zion. And upon Zion there is deliverance, there is holiness, you know, and the Spirit of God is here to set us free. So by faith, I want you to go to God in the place of prayer. Lord, every identity, or I mean, I mean no, no matter the number of identity cards you may have with you that bears different, you know, characters and different names, you want to jettison all of those things this afternoon and just claim your true identity in Christ. So you want to pray, Lord, whatever identification I've been carrying that is not mine, all of this time, to, today, Lord, I bring them to the, to, to, the, to the cross. And I ask God that, Lord, they will never be part of me anymore. Maybe you have been, you know, you have believed the lie of the devil that you are a failure. Maybe you have believed the lie of the devil that, oh, you will never marry. Maybe you have believed the lie of the, of the devil or maybe the doctors that, oh, you can never be pregnant. Or maybe you have believed the lie of the devil that, oh, you are, you, you are going to be an immigrant, I mean, an illegal immigrant for the rest of your life. Whatever identity, whatever story the devil may have been telling us, this is the opportunity that you and I have to jettison that identity and pick up your true identity in Christ. I don't want us to take this for granted. As a matter of fact, shall we please stand on our feet? Because I want us to do it, not sleeping, not dozing. That Lord, or every identity, you know, the devil may have called you a debtor that you are not going to get out of this debt, that you are a failure, that you, your life is a life of shame. Every identity that is not of God, or maybe you are sick, you are, you are, you are what do they call it, you are diabetic, you, don't, you want to reject every identity that is not from God. You want to reject every identity that is not from God. That your life will not be a struggle in the name of Jesus Christ. That you, your children will not be failures. Also receive the, ident the identity that you have is what your children will bear. So you need to have a good identity for yourself. So that your children also will, ha will also have a victorious identity. That Lord, I am not a failure. Whatever has been called me in the past, I refuse that is not, I'm not a failure, I'm not a reject. Lord, life is not a struggle for me in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not from a family of um, gener people who are under a curse. No, that is not my identity in Jesus' mighty name. My life will not be a struggle. I'm not a sick person. I'm whole in Christ Jesus. Whatever, you know, the enemy has called, whatever report has been, has been given, Lord, I reject the, the report to God, wherever it may have come from. I receive and I believe the report of the Lord in Christ Jesus. 
I am a success in Christ. I, I, I am above, like we have been told. I am not beneath. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever I lay my hands upon will prosper in Jesus' mighty name. I enjoy good health. I enjoy a wholesome, a wholesome lifestyle. I'm a, I'm a blessing to, to my generations in the name of Jesus. You want to start to proclaim the identity that God has given unto you. You want to start to proclaim that identity. He says, whatever you say to my hearing, that is what I shall do. So use the opportunity that I'm not a lone parent anymore because the Lord has added to me in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not a failure. I'm not, you know, whatever it is that is negative that, God, that you can remember or that is peculiar to you. The Bible says we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. You know, we are called of God. We are the blessed of God. He said he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You are the anointed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. You are not a victim of sin. You are not a victim of evil. In the name of Jesus, Father, we worship you. Lord, we bless and magnify your holy name. Jehovah El Shaddai, we give you praise. Blessed be thy name, our Lord and our rock. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Lord, in this season of perfect liberty, we stand upon Zion and we declare our new identity in Christ. That from henceforth, every tag, every label that the enemy has put upon us, either by reason of reports or by reason of emails or maybe spoken, whatever they may be, Father, we reject everything that is not your identity for us in Jesus' name. And from today, O oh Lord, we declare, that our, we declare our identity in Christ Jesus. That everything that has been following after us, you know, that has been a, an encumbrance, that has been weights, O oh God, that has been pulling us back, today we reject them in Jesus' mighty name. We receive a newness in Christ. We are a blessed, a blessed people. We are the royal priesthood. Whatever we lay our hands upon will prosper. The favor of God be with us. No shame will come near us. We are not sick. We are not, we are not, we are not dejected. In the name of Jesus. We are seated with you in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. Goodness and mercy shall follow us every day of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Men will see us and do us good. In the name of Jesus. We will not weep, we will not sorrow. In the name of Jesus that the work of our hands will prosper. We will continue to shine from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Heaven is our goal and we will make heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, we worship you. Blessed be thy name, everlasting Redeemer. For in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. The Bible says to us in the book of John, chapter 12, I think, it says, Whoever the Son of Man shall set free shall be free indeed. And a lot of us are from nations that has been previously colonized. And the beauty of independence is that you declare your own independence yourself. Amen. Otherwise, the colonial masters never, even though you have to struggle for it, and but the moment you decide, decide that, no, we are, not, we are not our ruler anymore, they don't have any option. They have to just let you go. So our independence is in our mouth. Amen and in our convictions. So from today, we have to understand that our identity has changed. No more failure. No more frustration. Amen? No more sickness. No more affliction. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Please be seated as we take our offerings. The Bible says that it is not good that we should come into the house of God without a gift. And one of the identities that we have as believers is that the silver belongs to him, the gold belongs to him, and as joint heirs with Christ, we have access to the best of what God has to offer. Amen. So please, as you give your offering, give abundantly as the Lord blesses you. Remember, you are sowing a seed, and it is what you sow that will come back to you. So if you want to prosper financially, Make sure that you give a good seed as the Lord blesses you in Jesus' mighty name. And the Lord will bless your seed in Jesus' mighty name. And please give cheerfully. Amen. God does not want 
a grumpy gift. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. For those of us who are giving online, um, our details will be on the screen very shortly. Um, you can do a bank transfer as the Lord blesses you. Or those of us who are serving, you can do your QR code through PayPal. Once you are ready, I just want to pray. Praise the Lord. So, um, if you are coming for the first time, please can we see your hand up? If today is your first time of service, oh, you are welcome, sir. Oh, you are welcome, sir. God bless you. Brother Adebayo, and God bless you, sir. You are welcome. Yes, please make them feel welcome. God bless you. You are welcome. We'd like to see more of you. The Lord will give you a first time miracle in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, ushers. So as we collect, our, as we give our offerings, let's just, you know, if, we, if you have given your envelope, you may just want to lift your hand up as a point of contact. Lord, for as many as are given online inclusive and all those who are giving through envelopes here, we ask that you please receive our offerings in Jesus' mighty name, sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, receive this seed, breathe upon it, and cause, O oh God, to cause men to give unto us a hundredfold return even beyond, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, we worship you. Blessed be thy name, precious Redeemer. Lord, I pray for those who have been faithful with their tithes, that, Lord, they will experience open heavens, that you will rebuke the virus on their behalf. And even those of us who are given our offerings also, that your promises of God concerning us will always come to pass. That, Lord, whatever we lay our hands upon will prosper. Blessed be thy name, precious Redeemer. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. I want to use this opportunity to pray for your son who's, who, who has been, oh Lord, um, the person that spoke your word over us this, this morning. Father, we ask, oh God, that your unction will continue to rest upon him. That, Lord, you will increase him, oh Lord, more and more. That your word will not be scarce in his life and your word will not stand in judgment against him. Thank you, Father, we worship you. For in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Shall we rise on our feet as we bring the meeting to a close? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Help me, Tasha. Identity is in you. Thank you, Lord, because from this moment onward, nothing will hold us down. No power of darkness will hold us down. Sickness or disease will not hold us down. No system of the world will hold us down because our victory is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for revealing our true identity to us. Lord, we bless and magnify your holy name. As your people go, I pray, Lord, that your presence will go with us in Jesus' mighty name. Because that is what you have said. That you go with us, that you be with us in our going and in our coming. So all through this week and for the rest of our days, we know that you will always be with us. Thank you, Lord, because no evil shall befall us. Thank you, Lord, because your angels will keep charge over us. Thank you, Lord, because we will never have any accident. Thank you, Lord, because we will not know failure. Thank you, Lord, because we will never lack. Because you are the shepherd of our souls. Thank you, Lord, because you have prepared a table before us, right there in the presence of our enemies. Thank you for a fresh anointing. Thank you for a new beginning. Thank you for restoration. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for perfect jubilee. Blessed be thy name, precious Redeemer. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful service. I have a wonderful week. <laughs> I wanted you to stay for <laughs>